Hi everyone, welcome to that seminar. Today I'd like to introduce Mehdi Barami, who's from the U uh, University of California, Merced. He's uh, been a strong player in the industry and has taught at an institution before, but then now he's finally getting to do his PhD work. Um, Mehdi has also been very involved in various conferences, uh, international conferences for computer science, a lot of IEEE. Um, a lot of IEEE committees. And without further ado, today is going to be talking about cloud computing and mobile, mobile cloud. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for coming. It's an honor to be here. And uh, I'm going to talk about data privacy and its challenges in mobile cloud computing. Uh, as you know, today everyone talking about the cloud computing. And one of the like, challenges is data privacy. So I'm going to talk about that. What's the pro uh, problem we have in the cloud computing when we use the mobile cloud company in specific? And um, what the solution we have to keep and maintain our data privacy? Uh, in this talk, I will talk about the introduction and what's uh, our motivation for this study and related work and the purpose method. And also, we will talk about uh, some of our experimental results and evaluation. And uh, finally, we wrap it up by conclusion and our future work. Uh, first, let's think about that. Currently, we're looking for different kind of computing machines. So we're looking, well, we start the computing machines. We start by like the supercomputers and always be used like a terminal. And we had uh, like a remote access to the supercomputers. And then based on the Moore's law, we changed the hardware to a smaller and smaller and changed to the, we get to like the mobile devices, cell phones. And then finally we get like a mobile internet of things, which is like a tiny computing machines. And now think about that, the storage. So the storage, when we start by remote access, and then we change the, using the storage to the local storage. By hardware, by hardware, we had like a hard disk and we used like a flash memory and something like that. And then now we change to mobile devices and we understand we need more storage. We want to carry all our data everywhere. And we use the cloud storage. So the problem with cloud storage is it our date one of the like a challenges is the data privacy you have to outsource your data on the cloud minimum you will be share your data with the cloud vendor how you can maintain your data privacy as you know we have a several issues about the storage and uh, data privacy when you outsource data some of the challenges uh, this shows by uh, Snowdon, and also we have uh, some ads. So, for example, HIPAA introduced you if you once use the system, if you want to encrypt your, if you want to uh, maintain all data patient and financial systems, you cannot simple submit to the like a cloud vendor, or for example, tomorrow you want to start a business. You want to have like a uh, financial system, or you want to have like a system for uh, health insurance, or something like that. So you cannot submit data without encryption. But when you think about that, you once use mobile devices. You once give one capability to your customer as one solution. So the people wants to use the mobile devices to submit their data. Sometimes is a, is a restricted and we need to take care about that. How we can have a, this kind of uh, like a problem in the cloud computing. One of them is the encryption. So one of the solutions we can maintain our data privacy is encryption. For example, we can use AES, CVS. I will talk about that, what is that exactly, but the problem when we use the current encryption method used on the mobile devices is a take energy. And we'll be battery draining in just one hour rather than use average one day. 
So this is the problem. So the mobile and also mobile devices have a limited resources. For example, battery, CPU, RAM. And if you want to think about that, we want to use, for example, recently we used mobile uh, Internet of Things. We have a tiny computing machines. These tiny computing machines don't have enough uh, storage. They don't have enough RAM. So how we can uh, take care about uh, data privacy? When we don't have a storage, when we want to use encryption methods, which runs 12 or 14 or 16 round, how we can maintain our data privacy. So why not, uh, this is our motivation for the study. We want to have like a data encryption on client side. Why we need the data encryption on the client side? As we know, when we share our data with a cloud vendor, minimum, the cloud vendor has access to your data. So we need to maintain this data privacy. If you want to maintain this data privacy, you have to encrypt on client side. It means you want to use on mobile devices. And using a simple instruction to avoid battery draining, and it must be implemented in tiny mobile devices, such as MIOT or mobile Internet of Things. So we want to have a simple instruction can be implemented by different hardware devices. And also we're looking for, uh, we want to protect our data privacy when we want to use mobile cloud computing or MCC. And also we're looking something with complexity low. For example, like a big old one. And we want to have a, if attacker wants to retrieve our data, have a, like a uh, heavy computation, require heavy computation, right? A complexity attack with minimum two times then. And then we want to have a, like a, for example, in this study, we will consider like a JPEG file as a, like a one case study. As you know, recently we use mobile cell phone and everywhere we use like a for take, take a pictures. So we want to, um think about that how we can have like a kind of product so the our customer they can use the service so what's the solution we have one of them is a aes and cbc encryption on original file so on your mobile devices you can use encryption methods like aes and cbc by this kind of encryption so we use on mobile devices. It means we need to think about that. First of all, can be implemented on the mobile device or not? This is one of the problem. Another one, we want to uh, talk about that, how much energy we need to use when we use the AEs. And also encryption JPEG encoder is another solution. For example, when we want to have like a uh, JPEG file, we can use the encoder, the JPEG encoder, to encrypt the data. But we want to think about that. This is one of the solution. And we want to consider as one of the uh, possible uh, solution. We want to think about that was the complexity of the encryption JPEG encoder. And also we can use like a third party audit. Like a, for example, if you want to submit your data on mobile devices, so other party, third party can monitor who access to this file who changed this file. Again, we want to be unsure about that we have something like a protect our data privacy. But we will talk about that the third party. It means the third party will be control this cloud vendor. Who will be take care about the third party, right? So we will have a chain of the like a, uh, third parties who take care about the data privacy in each of the like a, uh, cloud vendor. So that's a, another problem. And another one is the permutation base, once we will talk about that in this presentation. So the AES encryption, we can use like a, the plain text and we can use the private key and we have a, like an encrypted. But the problem, when we want to use AES, when we want to use this kind of encryption, it's a major problem for mobile devices. First of all, this kind of encryption method, we need to run several rounds. 
It means if we want to encrypt one plain text to get a final encrypted or ciphered text, we need, for example, 12 rounds, 40 rounds, 60 rounds. But think about that if you want to run AES on tiny devices, how we can implement it? We don't have a storage. We don't have enough memory. We don't have CPU to consider all rounds to have like a final cipher text. So that's a problem. And another solution is a cipher blockchaining. is a CVC. This is good for mobile devices. Why? Because most of them are currently be used for um, as a lightweight encryption method. We use CBS. The CBS is a kind of uh, provide the plain text and it's split with several. We have a, like a set of like a plain text, and each part we cipher each block of the plain text. So for mobile devices, has a, like a, as a limited resources, limited RAM, so we can split the plain text to several blocks, and we can encrypt each part. This is one of the solution. And how we can uh, run these possible solutions? First of all, think about that we can use the encryption JPEG encoder. It means our camera encoder, J use the JPEG encoder, and we have a, like a stream of the data. And then we use the JPEG encoder Based on the JPEG encoder, we recognize the resolution, create like uh, the comments, and based on the X, Y, and we have the color. And if you want to have like an encryption, then finally we can use the image. And if you want to encrypt this part, so we can add like a one uh, encrypted method on the like a JPEG encoder. And then we can encrypt, for example, X or Y or color. So the result will be something like this one. So the people who want to retrieve the data still need the key to retrieve the image. And if they need, if they have a, like a, they want to decrypt, sometimes we can decrypt like a based on like a X, Y, or sometimes based on the color. And then we can have a, like a, the final or original of the image. So how it works? Uh, we have a JPEG format. The JPEG format has a several markers. Uh, so for example, if you open a, like a string file of the like a JPEG, is a start by 0xff. It means this file, 0xda, and it shows this binary file is a JPEG file. And if you want to retrieve different parts of the image, we can use different marker. This is one part of solution. We can recognize each section of the image, JPEG file. And also, when we consider the JPEG format is a worst case in our scenario. Why? Because the JPEG format use the block of the image. For example, if you have like a one block of the image, one uh, picture is a split to several blocks. And each block, we can use this, like a binary files, for each block, we can retrieve the image. For example, if we have like a, a picture, if we have a picture, we have a, each part, we call them MCU. So each MCU can be retrieved. For example, if we have like a one MCU in the, all the file, we can retrieve one part of image. But think about that if we have a, like a one binary file, we want to run, for example, execute file. So if you want to use the method, our method use the permutation best. It means we scramble different part of file rather than we use the specific address of each image we use the binary. For example, when we take the picture, we have the binary file. And the binary file includes several MCU. It means each part of the image 
recognized as an MCU. And then based on this file, we can scramble the raw data of the JPEG. When we want to scramble this JPEG uh, binary file, we may have a one file that kind of we not encrypt the file because we not change anything. Because encryption, you change, for example, 0 to 1 based on what you given the key. But in this file, we not use any key. We not encrypt the file. So we want to keep data privacy, but we will talk about that, how we can do it. So think about that. We have a, a sequence of the bytes, and we scramble the raw data of the JPEG. This is the worst case in our scenario when we consider the JPEG format. The problem, when we want to use the JPEG format, we have an MCU. Each MCU can be retrieved. So how we can retrieve, how we can retrieve, for example, if we have like a one block and then we have a one MCU and then we have a third MCU. We have a, this MCU. If we scramble this part of MCU, we can scramble the second part of and the third part. And then when we want to retrieve the whole image, we need to retrieve each MCU. So if you can minimum retrieve one MCU, we can retrieve one part of image. This is one the problem. So we propose like a one method to keep data privacy, and we want to think about that. Use the big O1 to encode or kind of encode the image. Actually, we want to scramble the image. So. Think about that, we have original image file, we have a mobile devices, and we consider different files. One of them like a header of the file, the third one, and uh, so on. It will be different chunks, different chunk of the file. And then we have a cloud vendor, so we can use several cloud vendors, and then if we consider the original file, the original file is a series of the file when we want to submit to the cloud vendor. We have split it to several chunks, and we have a header. Each file, we have a header. And then we have a, like a, uh, the buffer size is based on how much the hardware devices on mobile devices can handle. For example, if like a capacity of the, like a, that mobile devices is a 10 kilobyte, so we consider 10 kilobyte. And also, we interested to use uh, when we wants to provide, like an attacker wants to uh, provide the, like our complexity for attacker, how they can retrieve our data and original image. We, we are looking something like a use the like a uh, n big o n factorial. Why? Because we wants to use the simple instruction like a big o one to encode our image. But we want to retrieve image. If you don't have like an instruction, you, when you want to retrieve the image, use the heavy computation, for example, in factoria. So as you can see, so when we, a series of the bits we have, for example, like a, think about that, we have a n bits and we scramble these files, and we want to retrieve these images. So minimum, we need n factorial. But when we want to have an n factorial, the complexity is a heavy for attacker to retrieve the image. Why? Because, because the complexity of the like a permutation, we need to run a combination of the several parts. And each part, we need to run complexity of the n factorial to combine several times of the uh, series of the bits. For example, if we think about that, we have a one source file, and we have a second source file, and then we have a, the third file. The third file is a base on we have like a, each file has a header file. So this is the header file. It has a, like a, the second one has a header file. And then each part, we have an MCU. 
So the MCU, each part of the image has an MCU. So we have a one MCU, second MCU, and we have a sequence of the MCU. And when we want to scramble this file, so think about that we have a binary, a series of the binary bytes, and then we want to scramble this binary file. And then we split it to several chunks. <laughs> so when we split it to several chunks and we submit to different cloud vendors, is it kind of we want to restrict when we want to like a uh, cloud vendor access to data just can access to one part of image, cannot access to all the image. And also we are interested when we submit one part of the file to one cloud vendor, if they need to retrieve the whole image for just one block of the image, we call them MCU. If they want to use just one MCU, still they need a series of the bytes to retrieve that block. So we so we want to know how we can avoid the cloud vendor or someone else or attacker to retrieve the original image. So if we think about that, we have a source file. And then the source file is a series of the bytes. So we have a header, and then we have a series of bytes. We call them MCU. And then we select a different rate of the MCU. For example, if they like, a, for example, in the one JPEG file, we have an eight byte for one MCU. So if we want to split this one byte to different part, so we can select the B1 and B2, B3, and so on, as a, like a, for example, five byte. So it means five byte, the first five byte here, the second five byte here, the third five byte here. So we have a series of the byte. And if we move the second one, we cannot retrieve the first MCU and the second MCU. So that's a make a problem for attacker. So we use the pattern as a recognize how we can uh, scramble the file. So we use the BI and BI plus one. For example, if we want to split the source file one to two different files. So we consider the header separate. Why? Because the header shows, for example, important information about the JPEG file. For example, what's the lucky like pixel? What's the resolution? So we want to take care about that. Attacker cannot access to this part of file. So we consider the one file as a header and the second and the third file. The second file shows the black one should be saved here and the black two, black three, black four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, if you. So this is the one term pattern. We can use different pattern. And now currently we work on the like a, uh, make it like a more complex. We are working on the like a patterns I'll be talking about the, in the future work. So we have a source file two header. So we have a series of the bytes. And then we have a, for example, BI, BI plus one. And so the for BI will be file 2.2 and then file 2.2. Here, as you can see, so we have a B1 based on this pattern. We have a B1, B2, B3. And then we have a B4, B5. And then we have a B6, B7. So far, we have split the file, source file, to several files, several series of files. And we consider, when we have like a, the rate of the like a I, we consider several size of the byte. So we <coughs> consider the size for B1 as a different rate of the MCU. If the MCU use the eight byte for each block, we will use five, we use seven. It depends to like a, what kind of like a buffer size we have, and then we can use. And then we use the chaos system to create a random number, which based on uh, this equation. And as you can see, we have like a series of random number, and we can create different range of random numbers based on uh, what the the a start point and but the problem as we can see we want to 
I split the file whole to through the several split files. So if we want to split one original file to several files, so we need to address hold the file. So we extend this chaos system by these equations, and we re receive this the red the red one shows exactly the numbers which we need to rearrange the file. It means, for example, if like a first black coming will be addressed to zero, the second one around 270, the third one, for example, 110. So we receive a sequence numbers. These sequence numbers is a random and attacker, if they need to retrieve the image, they need to have these numbers. So based on these numbers, we want to scramble the file. So we have a like a, each pattern and then we scramble each file. So we have a like a, use the array of the RPR. The RPR, that set of numbers which we receive, and then we use the we use the mu and p0 as a like a parameter to have a different random numbers. So we can have a like a different random numbers, and then we can use the p0 as a initialization number, and then we can use the mu is a one number, a specific number that make a, a list of random number. We call them RPR numbers, a set of numbers. So we use like a, we can. Uh, in this experimental <coughs> setup, we use like uh, several images as a regular image we take by cell phones. And then uh, we use uh, AES cryptography and also we use uh, JPEG encoder. And based on this method, we use the original file and split to several files. And each is a split of file we scramble the bytes. And then based on a scramble file, we use the <coughs> encoder kind of image. But this kind of image is a kind of, uh, if we think about that, the N is an eight, but the complexity of retrieving the image will be N factorial. So it means, for example, if we have like an N as an eight, so the eight will be retrieved in the like a less than like a 10 second in your in a computer. So how we can save like a um, like a, a strong like a, against like a attacker cannot retrieve the original image. We can increase the n by using the bit rather than use the kilobyte or megabyte. We can use the bits. For example, as we can see. So this is the proposed method because use the big O1 because we already have an RPR number. Just we scramble the file and we use the big O1. And then we have an AES. This is encryption. And this is the JPEG encoder. As you know, JPEG encoder use different rate of the like a uh, rates based on like what kind of like image we have. For example, if you have like a just black image, so the JPEG encoder will be faster to retrieve the image. So that the reason is depend to some uh, pictures, what kind of picture you submit to the JPEG encoder, so we can get uh, like uh, some uh, different rates. And this is for like uh, encryption and for decryption, same situation, but we provide like a, as a, we already discussed, when we want to retrieve the image, again, we back to the list of array how like a sequence numbers we have. And then based on uh, that sequence numbers, we retrieve and uh, the scramble like a file or combine the bytes. And if we think about that one part of like a solution to consider how like an attacker can uh, retrieve the image. So we can think about that. What's the difference between current position, original image in the binary file and to the uh, a scramble file. So we think about that, the status command, um, we can see, for example, uh, for zero 
here we can see like a zero. The second one is a, like a 300. It means like an original image byte located in the zero, and then the next one located 300 different position. So that reason the uh, complete is a random. So the attacker requires to try different way to retrieve the image. And we can have like a different rate of new and different uh, initial value to receive different random number. As we can see by entering different numbers, then we can retrieve different uh, rate of uh, random numbers. Yes. I may be misunderstanding. So if I understand correctly, you're dividing your image into a sequence of bytes. Yes, and then based on pattern. Yeah, and then you're <coughs> assigning each uh, byte to a new position. Uh, we assigning each part of the image as uh, a split of file, it's each chunk. Each by, by image chunk, right? By block. Yes, image by, by JPEG block, right? Yes, exactly. So we consider like each chunk use the these numbers to uh, scramble that sequence numbers in the one chunk. Um, just to get a sentence, maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding completely, but like, let's say that your entire image is black, and instead of JPEG, it was a bitmap. So that one is a worst case, exactly. Okay. The, because when you have a, like a one image completed black, it means if we uh, scramble again, nothing happened. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you want to retrieve the image, it's a simple. Yeah. You just retrieve once to retrieve you we try different like you change this uh, this kind of the file. So you will be, for example, I'm talking about like a pixel, but think about that this is binary. Because when you want to make a one pixel, you need to make a one MC. So attacker required to make it this MCU, the whole the MCU as a series of the bits, then can retrieve one pixel. So when we scramble the file, actually we scramble the binary file, right? So when we scramble the binary file and attacker wants to retrieve one MCU, need to retrieve the whole bits of the MCU. So think about that one, like a MCU located to 300 position. So if attacker needs to retrieve this one, need to retrieve the end factory. Yeah, I might yeah. just ask oh, yeah. And um, we consider like a several um, scenario attack against like a, our purpose. So scenario one, think about that attacker has access to all uh, split files. So it means minimum the complexity will be end factory. So n factorial, think about that n factorial for like a, uh, I believe that it was around two megabyte or extreme, sorry. Yeah, it's a three megabyte. So think about that is based on, we have a three megabyte. If we consider three megabyte here, so based on like a, what's the size of, each chunk we, uh, we consider, we will receive the different rate. If we have, a, for example, we split each image file based on 10 kilobytes. So we will be 300 factory. So the 300 factory is a symbol to retrieve the image. But if we have like a, rather than use the 30, uh, we use, for example, each chunk 10 kilobytes. So it will be 3,000 factorial So for retrieving the image. So it's a make a problem for attacker. So if we increase the number of N, we can increase the complexity. And another scenario, the yeah, assumption attacker has access to all split file and the size of each chunk. But still, the attacker does not access to the, the set of random number or PI and the size of chunk. Why? Because think about that when we don't have, we are an attacker and we want to access to all the files, different uh, files. And we don't have access to the PI, random numbers. It means we cannot understand where is the located of the each chunk. 
For example, 1, 100, 300 is a random number shows. Based on this random number, I can retrieve the image. But when I set, use this set, and when I don't have this set, it means I need to try all combination of the bytes. So it means we need minimum the size, and if the uh, like attacker know that each chunk is a 10 kilobyte, so minimum required 307 factorial to retrieve the image. I'm confused by that yes. slide because in the first sentence it says the attacker has access to the size of each chunk, and in the, then below it it says the attacker does not know the size of each chunk. Access, no, the access to all specified and the size of each chunk, but does not access, oh, sorry. It does not have access to the, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, this one is uh, like uh, the size of chunks. Sorry, I should remove this. Um, okay. So the attacker, sorry, the attacker has access to the size of chunks. So this is the size of chunks. <coughs> Okay, what does it, what does the sentence that says does not know the size of chunks mean? Oh, uh, I think I sh I had a mistake. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, just I had a mistake. Knows PI, but yeah. Oh, okay. And, does not sorry, know does the, not know the PI. yeah, yeah, exactly. Does chunks. not okay. know the PI, okay. but know the size of each chunk. Okay. When know the size of each chunk, so we consider like the size of the file and divide it to the size of each chunk, <laughs> and so let's try. Needs to write 307 factors. Why, why do you think that is the case? Because often, you know, if you just reconstruct, you know, puzzles are really great examples. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. If you, if you just have three or four pieces of a puzzle, often you can reconstruct the whole image. It's an image, right? It's, right. It has very coherent, you know, it has sort of, uh, you know, harmonic frequency coherence, you know. It's like, it has a lot of, there's, there's a lot of sort of uh, information in the domain that removes a lot of the randomness. Is, uh, is, actually depends to what kind of JPEG we consider. If we think about that, we have a similar like a pixel. So it's a, like a, uh, make it like a worst case for our like a uh, algorithm. Why? Because when we have like a, for example, one part of image blue and another part is a black. So if we, again, we scramble this file, is a retrieving the image is a simple. But if we split this file to several bits. So we split it like a, rather than to 10 split parts, we split it to 1,000 parts. So this would make a more problem, right? So it depends to combination, what's the rate we want, if I answer your question exactly. I guess, just, I, don't know. I guess maybe I don't fully understand it. We could keep going, I guess. So, uh, I yes. Guess there, I, what I'm trying to suggest is that you don't need a complete accurate solution. A partial solution is often good enough for reconstructing an image. Like if you reconstruct 10% of the image, it's yeah, probably we, good enough. You yeah, don't need 100%, I guess. Yeah. Okay. And also, yeah, we have like, a, for example, in the like a JPEG, for example, you can uh, have a, like a, you have a picture, but you have a, sometimes you have a border, you don't have like a access to other parts. You can retrieve the image. Is it kind of like image processing? Yes, exactly. We have this kind of problem, and this is one part of like a problem in our solution. Yeah. Another scenario, if we consider like an attacker has access to a split files, the attacker knows the size of chunks, and the attacker does not know the method is based on chaos. It means like a, again, we don't have like access to that uh, random numbers. And scenario number four, if we consider like a, we have like a, a sequence like a chunks. And the attacker does not know the retrieve, but attacker can access, like, a, think about that, we can retrieve the image based on using, for example, what kind of hacker. And the attacker could retrieve a part of image by using the brute force attack. It means we scramble the file. based on how many chunks we consider the chain. And this is the probability, and we 
we can understand like uh, the attacker, how many percentage can retrieve our image. <laughs> and now our purpose method and uh, we consider different value for our like a method and also we consider like uh, to make it more complex in our system. We want to use the TPM is a trusted platform module rather than use the user base like a selected like a what kind of like a split file how we can split and uh, use the several chunks in different files we can use the TPM so the TPM is a kind of like a IC in our mobile devices most of the mobile devices for example cell phones laptops and we can use as a base numbers for create the random numbers and why we can use uh, like a this kind of so uh, mobile internet of the teams is uh, if we think about that uh, mobile internet of the team most of the like uh, devices uh, the, the the maximum they have a 300 kilobyte uh, for flash and they have a, like a most of them like a less than 100 kilobyte for RAM so think about that if you want to run AES encryption method. So you need to minimum run 10, 12, or 14 rounds for ES encryption. And this is not possible to run, for example, this kind of encryption on uh, this uh, tiny computing machines. So this is make a problem. And uh, when we have a uh, N less than 300, it means also in our method, if we want to use N less than 300, it means we have a 300 factorial and we need like a complexity 300 factor and how we can increase the rate of like a complexity for attacker to retrieve the image we can rather than use the kilobyte we can use the bit so we can scramble the file based on the bits so if we scramble file based on the bits it means we can use the big o1 to uh, scramble file and attacker if they need to retrieve the image need 300 um, times 1024 and factorial to retrieve the image. So it's a make a worst case for the attacker. And also, if uh, currently we are working on the like, uh, when we think about that, we have a, a set of random numbers, or we can use, for example, encryption functions here as a third uh, party. The third party create a, like a, uh, a list of random numbers based on chaos system and send to the mobile devices. And the mobile devices can submit to the uh, MCC storage. It means mobile devices rather than use the function and create how they can encode the image, they can retrieve the numbers from this third party. And based on this third party can submit the uh, uh, scramble or encode the file and submit to the cloud storage. This is the references, and thank you for listening. Any question? Yeah. Yes. Um, so this is all about scrambling to send to the cloud. What about unscrambling? So I know there's like that array of PI that you use, but like, do you just transmit that as well? So yeah, so we consider in like a case study, we consider like a, we, the mobile devices has a several arrays. So when we want to retrieve the image, we still need this array. So if we have a, this array, again, the retrieving the image for mobile devices, who is owner will be big O1. But for attacker who do, does not know like a, the like a, the RPR, so need to like a, try or combine several bytes. So it means require n factory. Right. But I mean like, so, is this all assuming that the retrieval is only going to happen on the sender side? So, like, so I'm, I mean, I'm thinking of normal mobile applications, and you usually have a sender and a receiver. Right. So, like, how does if there is another receiver, how does that receiver get the PI information? So it so depends. For example, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah, we need to save. We need to have a, like a list of that one. For that that reason, we like a, we consider. For that reason, we consider like a third party can collect like a, the list of RPR. So if I need the, my RPR, I can send like a file name 
my mobile device ID, I need this RPR. So give me this RPR number. What do you mean by a third party? Third party. Third party, it means one, like a third party just create the random numbers. I mean, this, this because, is, yeah. Sounds like a weak link in a, in a system. Like, the whole thing sort of, the whole use case kind of puzzles me. It seems that, that you're trying to, I mean, you know, mobile devices like iPhone, Android devices, you know, they have real CPUs. They can, they can use HTTPS and, and they have encrypted boxes. Yeah, currently, right? yeah. But, but Internet of Thing things, you know, don't, right? They have right. CPUs and no memory. And so I think the use case here is like a, is like a security camera that is collecting images or video continuously and transmitting it over the internet to some console, right? And this is like Lutz was saying that, that you need to, you're generating the images, you're scrambling them so that, you know, no random people in the middle can read them, but then you need to read them because you're you're looking at it, right? And so there's this problem of key distribution where, where the PI vectors, the device needs to have them, and it may be a tiny embedded device and you need to have them. And so your suggestion here is that, it's sort of key escrow that we have some trusted third party. That seems like a huge weak point in the whole system. Um, uh, if you think about that currently, like our SSL, how works simple, like a similar to this kind of like a strategy. Think about that. Yeah, Today right. I want it's, to it's, work it's, on the, like right, something. Right. So I request like, the key from the third yeah, party. Yeah, it's it's a similar. I guess, yeah, I'm I not guess, sharing I guess, data. I guess problems, with, I suppose, but, yeah, exactly. But, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of the sort of the. But yeah. one, one could also, I mean, you could avoid that by generating your own keys. But right? on mobile devices, because we want to, like, a, we have a problem with computation on mobile devices. We can create, but sometimes it's a, like a, the complexity is high. That's yeah. a problem. Yeah, I guess I was just problem. suggesting that, that some of the weaknesses that, that plague, you know, like, like SSL and public key encryption might actually be a lot worse because it may be much harder to update your, your device. Key revocation may be much harder on a mobile device, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There are examples where, where these webcams that have like passwords in firmware or, or that can't be changed because the manufacturer no longer exists and things like that. You could have sort of the same problem. So Dropcam uses HTTPS, right, for the encryption of the video that it sends as an embedded camera. So my, one question is, you know, like the, the challenging part of doing encryption in the device, how practical is it? And is it just a matter of, you know, engineering in the next version of the system that will come? Or is it something that you you won't be able to do? Um, actually, <clears throat> encrypt. This is not encryption. That's a that's a like a simple like a, if they have like a access to the random number, so they can simple retrieve on like a require just big O one. So, but encryption method we try to change the bit to another bit. So it's a kind of like a make a, like a problem for our scenario. If we have like a like a one image, we have a series of the beads, but actually when we don't encrypt the like a, the whole image and we with we like a uh, just a scramble and we have a, the original image on the like a we call the encrypted file, right? But the problem is come from when you think about that the attacker try to make a connection and have access to all files and for the image is the worst case and we use like a one like a sequence like a bits so they can retrieve one part of image for example if you retrieve one part one part and you try by image processing make a, like a connection between these parts and retrieve the original image mm -hmm. is a kind of Depends. Depends to the like of what kind of image we have. And also here, as we discussed, like a, also the the like a, most of the mobile internet of things, they use uh, 802.54 is like a protocol six for for like a, a specific when you want to transfer data bits between like a mobile internet of things. Currently we have like a protocol for secure networking when send data from one device to another device. But when now we are thinking about that, we want to submit this data 
we have like an encryption between like devices. But when we submit to the cloud vendor, is a make a problem. We want we don't want to share with that vendor. Yes. Uh, um, oh yeah. Um, so have you looked into trade offs about the number of chunks you need to split the image in? Because there's like all this discussion about well, you can reconstruct the image if you know some pattern about it or something. So like, have you looked into orders of chunks that generally work well? Um. Yeah. So. If we have like an or, order of chunks, it depends, again, it depends all the method, depends to number of chunks. Oh, yes, yeah, so that's what so I'm if, saying. So if order kind of, of like, an, chunks, yeah, if we, or like we have like a, rather than like a, think about that, we have a puzzle, right? <laughs> if we have a four, like a, we split it to four parts, it will be simple, we can retrieve, right? If we think about that, rather than four, parts four piece we split it to one thousand piece right so this right. is make a problem so the order is it depends when we want to submit we use the pattern to submit to several files we call it we have a something like a, we call them like a dark side of the like encryption is uh if you search on that about that the dark side of the encryption we think about that everything based on encryption so if we have a one day, re we can retrieve the image based on encrypted file, so we don't have anything, right? So it's a kind of that reason in our paper we mentioned we want to split to several files to different cloud vendor to maintain data. One part of vendor has a one part of file, another vendor has a different part of file. So if they have an order, still they cannot retrieve the image. Sorry, I, no order of the number of chunks. Yes. So just like the total number of chunks you need so that there's low power on the sender side for splitting the file into chunks. Right. And then, like I understand, yeah, obviously you want to send it to different people. But it's just roughly like the minimum number that you need to send to different people to make sure that you know attackers can't reconstruct the image. So attacker attacker can reconstruct the image if minimum has a one MCU series of the bytes, eight bytes. So think about that. We split one MCU to two different files okay, okay. and submit each file to one vendor. For example, on mobile, you use the mobile devices, okay, yeah. you take an image and one part of this MCU save on the like Amazon, another one save on the Google. So how these two yeah. vendor can access, okay. yeah. But if we think about that, the order is, uh, again, order is completely depends. So if we add the like um, increase the N, so we will have an N factor. Yeah? So it will be increase the complexity. Yeah, yeah. So if we have a small size of the chunk, it will be better. All right, well, thank you again. Thank you.